Hi everyone, it's Kent Barber from Game Logic Design here. Today what we're going to be going over is creating this little scene here in Cinema 4D, bringing it into Quintana and rendering it using Pixar Renderman. And we've made selection sets for all of the windows. So all the windows have a single material. The ob All the buildings here have a single material, but we are overriding the buildings to have give them different colors. Just overriding the color, but having the same material at all. And also lastly, we've got a single object down here for the footpath, and we've assigned a material to that as well. Now this is all created from Cinema 4D. We just came in, we have a object in Cinema 4D that is a house that contains selection sets for the faces. Turn that using a cloner into a little street with a footpath, brought that in Katana, and that is what we're going to end up creating today. Right, let's get into it. So here we are in Cinema 4D, and what I'm going to do here is just create a simple little street scene. So I'm going to come up to the window here and choose Content Browser. And in here I'm going to search for house. And now I'm just going to scroll down until I find a house that has some windows here. So I've got this one here. So I've got studio version here so it comes with all of the libraries that come with Cinema 4D. And we're just going to use this one right here. And this is a single object. We don't need the material so I'm just going to delete that material. And what I want is I want to have a selection set which defines the windows of this house. So I'm going to change to polygon mode. I'm just going to go in and select just the windows on this object. So that when we're in Katana, we can use this selection set information and assign a material just to these windows, separately from the rest of the entire building. Now we may want to go through as well and select different parts of this building and mark them all up, but once we've done the windows, you'll see how easy it is to do other parts in the same workflow. So we've marked it up, we create a selection for set from the select set selection, and I'm going to call this selection set windows. And I'm just going to rename this just as house. Because naming in Katana is very important. You're going to be traversing the scene graph based on the names, and the hierarchy is really important as well. So what I want to do next is I want to create a street basically with a bunch of these houses. I'm going to do that with a MoGraph, a cloner, drop that in. I'm going to call this a block. It's going to be a basically a block of flats or houses. And we want that to go along the X direction. Just enough so that there's like a little gap between them. And I might get five of these. So there we've got five houses on our street. And I'll put add a little footpath as well to this. So I'm going to create a plane, and I'll just drag that out so it's roughly big enough for a footpath there. So that's good enough for now. And we'll call that footpath. And this is basically our scene that we're going to export this now to Katana using Alembic. So I've got the file, export, Alembic, and I've already called a block here, but I'm going to save over the top of that one. And I don't need any frames on here, so I've pulled that down to zero. The scale is set to 0 0.01, it may be 1 by default for you. And down here we want to make sure we've got polygon selections um, enabled so that it exports out this selection set. That's what we need to do, we can click OK. So now we're kind of done with Cinema 4D for this, and I'm going to switch back over to Katana now. First thing to do in Katana in the node graph is add an Alembic node. And I'm just going to call this my street. Or what did I call it over here? I called it a, uh, I think I called it a block in Cinema 4D. So that was a block. So I'm going to have a street with a block on it. So that makes sense. And let's go browse file asset and we'll choose block. So now over here we'll see that we have Underneath here, we've got our geo, our asset, our block, which contains a bunch of houses, and a footpath, which contains the shape for the footpath. If we go to our viewer here, we'll see whatever we have expanded in this tree. So if I expand this one, we're going to see our house. Okay, next thing I want is a camera. So I'm going to create a camera in this scene. And I'm just going to rename this to just main camera. And we'll leave that there. And in the tree view, it's just being called just been called cam camera in the tree so it's showing up there 
behind the cam camera. Okay, so now we want to merge these into our scene. So I click tab again and type merge. I'm just going to drag these in to our merge. And we click on the left option there and we'll see everything is in our scene graph. We've got our geometry and our camera now. And down here in the viewer, I'm going to make sure I'm looking through that camera. And I'm just going to position that camera so that it's looking somewhere kind of interesting. About there. That should get the rest of our street in the shot. Okay, I'm messing around with this a little bit too much. Okay, that's good enough. Uh, so our camera's looking in the right location. And now we want to set up our rendering. So we need a render settings. Drag that into there. And this is just going to say that it's a 512 by 512 image. That's okay for now. And we want a Pixar Man, PR Man, global statements to set the Pixar information. We need a render node as well. Create the render node for the actual output. And on the Pixar global statements, um, I like to enable the the incremental mode so that it uh, basically refines in the in the monitor as we're rendering. So I'm going to come down here and also add a monitor to this. And this is where we'll see our renderings. Um, last thing we need to add to this, just so we can actually see something, is we need to add in uh, lighting. So we're just going to go in here and type gaffer 3. We'll drag that in there. And we want to add a right-clicking here and add, we'll just add a dome light. And down the bottom here, under PR man statements, I'm going to set this camera visibility to yes so that the dome light appears and it's going to be white. It's going to be a white in the background instead of black. Otherwise, we wouldn't we would see this on a black background. So that should be good enough to actually get a rendering now. So if I just click on here, right click and go preview render. In the catalog here, I can click, middle click, go to the monitor tab and drop that in. And we're going to see our object rendered in the scene. And you can see we've got our five buildings there. So now I want to add like a default material to this entire scene. So I'm going to create a default material just to give everything a, a color. So clicking tab again, I'm going to create a network material. And I'm going to name that NM default. And I'm going to add a terminal ABXDF to define the look of the color of the surface. And that creates a little node at the top that we're going to connect our shader to. So now let's create a shader. Clicking tab again, and we want a PR man shading node. And I'm going to drag this by clicking on the arrow here, click out, drag that, and just attach it to the BXDF. Now we need to just attach this, merge this into our scene as well. So from there, we just click and drag and put it onto the arrow there. And now it's merged into our scene. And I just want to rename this as well PSN default. And we need that to have a shading type. And we're going to use a PXR Disney. And it's going to have a default kind of blue color to it. So the last thing we need to do is we've, well, let's just come over here and click down the bottom here. And may remember that clicking on this option here updates the scene graph to show what's in the scene at this point. Flowing from the top, all these flowing in through the merge all the way down. And so at this point, we've got basically everything in our scene. That includes all the geometry, the camera got our light under the gaffer as well. And we've also got our material. That's our material there. Now we need to assign this material to everything in our scene. So to do that, we need a material assign. So let me just I'll grab all these. Click tab and type material assign. I'm just going to drag that and drop it in there. And under here, I'm just going to just middle click and drag in our material. And I want this to apply to just basically everything in the scene just for this default. So I'm going to grab our geo and drag that under statements and just let go. So now everything under the in the scene graph under root world geo, which is all our geometry, is going to have the default material, which we just created. 
So now we can come down here, we can click on the render, right click and go preview render. Just drag that in and we'll see now everything is that blue color. Okay, but what we really want is we want to have a different color for the buildings, different color for the windows and a different color for this street just to begin with. So let's go ahead and do that and to do that I'm just actually going to copy and paste these here. One, two, three. And under this one, I'm going to just go make sure I rename all these. I'll call that facade, that's the outside of the building. Uh, we want this one to be the window, call it windows. And lastly, we want the the footpath. Let's just call it footpath. Footpath. This one here. Footpath. And while we're here, we'll just go and we'll change the colors as well. Make all the buildings a kind of a orangey color. We'll make the windows a. We'll just make it a darker, a darker kind of blue color. And the footpath can be just a mid kind of gray. Alright, now we need to hook all those up as well. Uh, and to make this just look a little bit cleaner, sort of drag it all the way over there. What I'm going to do is make another merge node here. And just connect all those up here to this merge node. And I can delete that one. And this can connect straight into that one there. That's all our materials coming in. Now we need to make sure that we assign these materials to our objects in our scene. So I'm just going to come in and create another material assign. Actually first I'll just take this one, I'll rename that to MA default, just so I know that's the default material assign. Create another material assign, drag that under here. And this one's going to be for the facade for the buildings, MA facade. And I want to use that facade material, so I'm going to drag that into here. And I want to apply it to all of the house houses here in the in the um, under the block. So to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to drag in the block into a custom. So I'm going to create a custom, drag in my block, and now I'm going to say everything under this block that has the word house in it, oh, has the word house, and ends, uh, and basically is a type uh, poly mesh. So I'm going to say, and type equals poly mesh. So We'll see if that works. Uh, actually, that needs to be a bit of wild card, so it needs to be has the word house in it, and it's of type poly mesh. So it's going to grab all of these here. Now I could have just said everything with the word house in it, really, but we'll just leave that like that for now. And uh, that should that should be working actually. So let's just come down, just come down here, preview render. We'll just drag that in. We'll see that all of the houses are now this orangey color. And next I want to have the windows in there as well. So I'm going to create another one called Material Assign. And I have to drop that in there manually now. So let's just connect that up. This comes after the facade because we want the windows applied afterwards because the windows are basically underneath that. So everything, including the windows there, is actually grabbing that facade material. Now we want the windows. So let's here, rename that to MA Windows, and we want our Windows material, and we want basically everything under block as well, but with the name Windows. So I'm going to create a custom expression as well, drag it in the block, and I'm going to say everything under here, the word Windows. And we could do the same as we did here, we could say just to 
kind of narrow it down. This will work, by the way, and I can show you that this will work. Actually, we'll come up here and we'll just we'll do a render, preview render. Drag that down. You can see the windows are now blue. But we can kind of refine it a bit as well if we really wanted to, and we could say, and they're of type face set. And we'll just see if that works as well. And there we go, we've got the same. So last thing to do is the uh, is the pavement there. So we'll just create one more material assign. And we're going to call this, I think it was called footpath. We will drag that in under here. And we want to assign our footpath material. And we're just going to use that one object all by itself. So we just know that there's only one object called footpath. So let's just grab it. Um, I will use an expression as well. Custom expression. Let's drag in Geo just in case we add more footpaths to our scene. Um, everything under Geo asset that has the name footpath in it and is of type poly mesh and let's preview that as well so there you can see we've got all the different parts and they've got their materials assigned to them so now what I'd really like to do is just have different colors for these buildings. And one way of doing that is using what's called a prim bar. So to start with, I'm going to come up here and I'm create a PR man shading network. I'll just place it in my scene. And I'm going to make it of type. Let's click on here. Uh, prim bar. And this has a bunch of types under here. And the one we want is a color because what we're going to do is we're going to use this to change the color inside of our facade. We're going to have it kind of driving this color here based on what kind of object that we've got selected. So, so I'm just going to call this uh, up here PSN um, building facade from bar. Okay. Should we just narrow this down a bit since we might want to change another parameter? We'll call it facade color print bar. And we need to give this a variable name which is going to show up that we're going to be using to drive it. We're going to call that um, just the paint color. And then I'm just going to connect the resulting RGB value from this into the facade's base color. So now what we need to do is we need a way of setting this color which is going to drive the color on that uh, shader. And we'll do that by coming in here underneath the, the Limbic file, the street in, and we're going to add a attribute. What have I done there? Let me just drag that back in. We're going to add an attribute set. Attribute set. And we'll just put that straight in here. And we're going to call that attribute set AS paint color. And we'll just leave that like that. So what we need to do now is we need to set this so that it's going to come in and uh, underneath one of our assets, we'll go into one of our houses here. Go to the attribute editor. Underneath the geometry, we're going to add some arbitrary values in here that are going to in turn drive the color of this uh, shader. So we want that paint color to come in here. We want to be able to set that and it's going to drive that. So each of these will be able to drive the color up here. So to do that, we just come up to the we've got our attribute set here. We're going to make one called uh, geometry. Looking down here, geometry dot arbitrary 
got paint color. And then we need to tell it what it's going to work on as well. So we need a, we could use a, we could use a, a expression there, or we can just use a path. So I'm just going to use a path. I'm going to say put this attribute on every single, everything, or oh, everything under, everything under geo is fine. So everything under geo. We'll put that on there. So now everything under the geo is going to have this uh, geometry arbitrary paint color. And let's just expand that, and we'll just look at our house shape again. And now you can see that we've got this arbitrary. And we've got the paint color underneath that. Actually, no, we want that to be uh, not a path. We want it to be an expression. Otherwise, you'll notice that it's appearing on everything. It's appearing on block and house and all these. But really, we just want it on this this single poly mesh is really the only place we need this. So I'm going to change that to be a cell. And under here, I'm just going to drag on, I'm gonna drag on our block. I want that to be on, so I'm leave that there. I need to make a custom, and I'll drag the block into the custom, and then under that I want it to be okay, everything that has the word house in it that is of type. Equals poly mesh. And I just need another equal sign in there. Okay, so now if we have a look, we'll see that the attribute's not there on any of these anymore. And it now should just be appearing just on the shape, and it shouldn't be on the windows. Oh, it is on the window as well. So we could fix that up, but I'm not going to worry about that at the moment. At least it's only really just on the leaf nodes at the, the bottom level here, and not on any of these other ones. Okay. Now, what I want is actually be able to set a, a color instead of the double. And the way apparently you go about doing this is um, you go through and we're going to create a, a group in here. And under this group, so under here I'm going to add a string. I'm going to call this scope. Actually, sorry, I need to rename this. Uh, on here rename parameter as scope and then in here I'm gonna call this primitive and then I'm gonna add another one in here called color RGB and I'm gonna call this one call it value now we're going to come in here and I'm going to set this to be some color that I can recognize. We'll make it a bright yellow color. So now if I've done this all correctly, the paint color should now be now be driving this here. It's got its color there. And that is going to be picked up from this here, this prim bar. Paint variable type paint color, variable type color is going to be affecting, driving it through to the base color RGB, this one here. You can see that's hooked up. And I'll come over here and we'll just change that color to something else. So let's change it to, I don't know, that color. We'll come down, because I tested this before with yellow just to make sure it was working. And uh, we'll do a preview render. Come up to catalog, monitor, drag that in. We can see that is driving the color. That's the color we had. Okay, so that's all good. But what we want is we actually want to have uh, a different color per building. So we want to be basically having multiple attribute sets. Um, now, there's actually a better way to do that, I found out. And the way to do that is instead of having lots of these, you create what's called a uh, group, a group stack. And I'm going to copy this. Let me let me put this into the hierarchy here. Drag that into there. And let me disconnect that. 
can disconnect that. And uh, what I'm going to do here is copy this. Right click in here and click paste. And now under this group value, I have the color here. And under the statement here, I can actually choose the building that I want it to be on. Now, I'm just going to do this roughly here. I'm just going to say that I don't want that at all. And I'm just going to say, make house number four this color. And we'll leave that at that ghastly color that we've got already. And then I'm gonna just going to paste in another one. And this is the second one. And we will change this color to something else. Let's change it to a green color. And we'll drag on house number three into the statement. And you should let me uh, just check this. It's a custom. Let's make that a custom. And I'm going to drag house three into the custom. And I'm going to delete that one there. So in theory now we should have two attribute sets setting that paint color value being picked up by the shader. So let's just check that this works. We should have at least two houses being rendered in different colors. And there we have them. Those two colors are uh, being picked up. So I'm just going to pause that and do the rest now. Actually I'll just keep recording. No harm in it. And we'll create a oh, what about a green one? Let's just go through the, the colors here. We'll take a orange colored one and we'll make that house number two. And open X change this to custom house number two. And right click paste and I'll paste two more in. And I should have probably done this in reverse because I've got the numbering here, but it doesn't really matter. Custom will remove that one. House number one. And I'll change house number one's color to uh whatever that is. And number five here. House number zero. And we'll change this color. Not doing well picking my colors here. Just a red, a bright red, or a dark red. Okay, let's see what that looks like now. And there we have all our houses having different colors. All right, so I'm just going to leave it right there. So just to recap what we've done, we have created a file in Cinema 4D that contained a number of houses, and each house has a selection set defining the faces for the windows then we've made a cloner to create a block of these we've created five of them and we've added a little footpath we then exported it to alembic and we made sure to include that polygon selection set when we exported and then over in katana we have set up the entire node graph here so that we are rendering uh, each of these individually with their own material so the buildings the facade all the buildings have their own material, all the windows have their own material, and the footpath has its own material here. And then to uh, cap that off, what we did was use, we used attribute sets and group stacks to change the color of each of the actual houses themselves by overriding the base color of this Pixar Disney shader. So that is the end result there, and uh, we'll just leave that right there, and I hope you enjoy this tutorial, and there'll be more to come soon. Thanks.